I think because on the outside I, I, I looked okay and I felt okay within myself that I just kept dismissing it. Charlotte Lassica is young and fit, but behind closed doors, she continues to recover from a deadly cancer. It would have been January last year. I started experiencing abdominal cramping, but it wouldn't hang around. It would kind of come and go. Month after month, her abdominal pain worsened. I was putting it down to my menstrual cycle or just something that didn't agree with my belly. But then towards July last year, they became really persistent and wouldn't go away. Um, I was swollen, I felt full all the time. Then Charlotte's pain reached its worst on her 22nd birthday. I remember sitting there and I was in so much discomfort. So I booked in the colonoscopy and then I started doing my Google researching and worst case scenario was bowel cancer. Her doctor tried to convince her the pain couldn't be bowel cancer. They knew I was panicking about what could potentially be the case and um, he called me back and tried to reassure me saying that, no, not bowel cancer, you're too young. But Charlotte wasn't too young. She was diagnosed with stage three bowel cancer. She had her entire colon removed, eight rounds of chemotherapy, and is using a temporary stoma bag, which collects faecal matter from her digestive tract. I've had it for about 10 months now, and now it's just my thing. I'm just like, you know, people wake up in the morning and they put their glasses on to see, or they check their glucose, and I just go, this is my thing, and it's not gonna be forever, and it has essentially saved my life. Charlotte is part of a global surge in cases of bowel cancer in young people, with researchers now scrambling to uncover why there's been a dramatic increase in diagnoses over the last 30 years. Australia has one of the highest rates of bowel cancer in young people around the world. In a sign of how critical this health crisis is, an international conference in Spain was held to discuss the origins of the rising cases of bowel cancer in young people. 22 countries, including the UK and US, attended. Genetic pathologist and associate professor Daniel Buchanan was there. Everyone's agreed that the first steps are really to try and understand the causes, because if the causes are um, different to what the causes are for later onset bowel cancer, then some of the tools that we have at the moment through our screening program may not be as effective um, for younger people as they are in our older population. Early onset bowel cancer is when any person under the age of 50 is diagnosed. Common symptoms include blood in stool, diarrhoea or constipation, abdominal pain and extreme fatigue. Gastroenterologist Dr Jacob Begun has been researching the connection between inflammatory bowel disease and cancer for the last 20 years. What we notice is that Australia has a very high per capita consumption of processed meat, ultra-processed foods, one definition is more than five ingredients in a package. Another is one where you can't pronounce the ingredients that are in the package. Another one is one that doesn't spoil in a short amount of time. These are all possible definitions of ultra-processed foods. He believes our reliance on convenient takeaway and frozen meals may also be to blame. I think that our intake of these foods is increasing because of lifestyle factors. But when you look around the world and look at the developed countries where they have this food industry compared to developing countries where it's more um, home-cooked meals and fresh ingredients, we see lower rates of bowel cancer and lower rates of a variety of autoimmune conditions as well. The exposure to microplastics through the food chain is also a possible contributing factor in the increase in bowel cancer. Concentrations of microplastics seem to be associated with something called barrier function. So when you have a high level of microplastic, it seems that the barrier function of the gut is somewhat impaired. We think that this might be triggering inflammatory conditions. In a University of San Diego paper published in the scientific journal Nature, American researchers revealed a potential link in childhood exposure to the gut toxin colobactin, which may be related to antibiotic use and developing bowel cancer later in life. 
the time when we have the biggest plasticity in our gut microbiome is early in life, probably in the first two years of life, um, but certainly in the first four years of life. And things like early exposure to antibiotics, whether or not it's a vaginal delivery versus a C-section, whether or not you're breastfed, these all have big effects on our microbial community. Charlotte Lassica believes her cancer stems from her childhood. I had ongoing gut issues since I was a kid. Um, so kind of down the path of Crohn's and colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, um, I was diagnosed when I was about six. At the Royal Melbourne Hospital, registered nurse Christy Whitney is treating an increasing number of young patients like Charlotte. There's um, a broad spectrum of ages. Um, you know, I think the youngest I've looked after was probably 27, um, and then it goes all the way up. But 27 is too young for bowel cancer. Last year, Christy started to experience similar symptoms to her patients. I really only had three episodes of blood in my stool in one week. Um, I didn't have any pain, um, no diarrhoea or constipation. It really was just the three episodes. She knew it was serious and booked in a colonoscopy. My diagnosis was um, colorectal cancer, uh, specifically in the sigmoid section of my bowel, um, and thankfully just stage one. The 48-year-old had a portion of her bowel removed and an ileostomy, resulting in her using a stoma bag for five months. I think my colleagues um, were an overwhelming support for me as well. Um, I work on the colorectal ward and I had before my diagnosis, so I knew a lot of them. And then when I suddenly appeared in the ward as a patient, there was a lot of them that were shocked. Charlotte continued to work at a restaurant during her diagnosis, treatment and recovery. It's where she found support from colleagues and customers. I was fortunate that I would get my treatment and get to come home to my own bed where some people aren't as lucky, where they get reactions and have to stay in hospital. So, um, yeah, and to be able to work through it all as well was, yeah, very lucky. For now, her plan is to travel to Tanzania and work as a volunteer. When she returns, Charlotte wants to continue helping people. Yeah, I don't know what job it would kind of be, but being that support for people going through something like this, even working in the colorectal wards and being people waking up with a stroma and being able to say like, look, it's crap, but it gets better, it's gonna be okay. 